Um, welcome. Welcome, everybody, to uh, the 2021 Spring Ancient Comedy production. Um, I am Professor Sophie Klein of Classics and Core, and it is my great pleasure to um, welcome you here over Zoom from whether you're in Boston, whether you're across the country, whether you're across the world, to join us for a night of ancient comedy. Um, tonight, we are going to be presenting a play uh, that is an adaptation of Plautus's Menaikni. It has been adapted by the students in CL 229, Roman Comedy in Translation. They've been working very hard on the script. Um, several of them are in the script, uh, in, in the play tonight. Um, some of them have done everything from design, the beautiful background, background that we have here, um, to the program, which I'll um, circulate in a little bit. Um, but uh, first, just I want to take this opportunity to thank them. If, if you're in the room, um, our uh, CC our CL229 people, if you just want to um, say hello, you can unmute yourselves and just um, say hello for a sec, turn on your camera um, and say hello and get the recognition that you deserve. Hello. hello. Hi, thank thanks you for coming. There we go. Excellent. Excellent. Welcome. And a big applause to them, a virtual applause, even though we're all on, on Zoom, so we can't hear the laughter and applause the same way as if we were in person. But these students have done an amazing job of writing a play to be performed on Zoom. Yeah, they've written it for this time, for this moment in history. And in many ways, it is what Plotus probably always intended when he wrote this in the third century BCE, second or third century BCE. Um, there's a lot of people to thank who um, made tonight possible. Um, I just wanna first recognize the students, second recognize Arthur Peterson and Eliza Givens in the classics department and Zach Boss over in CORE who designed our poster and helped incredibly with um, publicity. Um, I also wanna thank Brian Jorgensen um, who uh, gathered our opening act for the last several years, um, Fish Worship, um, our faculty band and they're gonna do a number for us in, uh, in a little bit. Um, our sponsors, the Department of Classical Studies, the CAS core curriculum, the Undergraduate Classics Association and the Distinguished Teaching Professorship. Um, thank you so much for being here and enjoy the show. Time for me? Please. All right. Well, first of all, the band Fish Worship would like to thank Professor Klein very, very much for including us on this occasion. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Fish Worship is a band made up of uh, mostly professors who have a very close connection with the core. We got uh, astronomy, classics, uh, computer science, psychiatry, English, and then also a graduate of core and classics. So I am going to try and start the show here. Um, stop, we'll stop other screen sharing, that's okay. And here we go. And let's see if this is gonna work. Oh, wait, I need to, uh, well, tell me if you can hear this, Sophie, okay? You can see it. Yeah, but can you hear it? Well, you're not talking yet. No, I know. Hello, I'm here representing okay. the Blues Band. Professor Klein has kindly invited us once again to open the show for core and classics presentation of an ancient comedy. The band could not uh, get together in person, of course, this year, but each of us contributed what we could from wherever we were. Our first tune tonight is taken from our most recent CD, which can be seen here. As you know, classical scholars have told us that on the temple of Apollo at Delphi were written the words, no thee say upon, no yourself. Not very well and we know that the ancient Greeks mm -hmm. gave this a, a very good try, but we're not successful. It is only in our own time that people of our time have developed methods by which we can truly and accurately know ourselves. One of these methods is quantitative assessment, and the other method is ceaselessly suspicious scrutiny. That is, assessment through quantitative data, numbers, uh, ratings, surveys, data of all kinds, and second, self-knowledge through constant nitpicking, harassive judgment of self and others. Astronomy professor James Jackson has captured this modern breakthrough 
in a song called Do You Measure Up? The question. So here it is, uh, along with some shots of the band throughout the years. Do you measure up? Everybody's always watching Every little thing you think or do or say Everybody's sitting in judgment Everybody's scrutinizes every day
is our great good fortune that a few precious recordings of live fish worship performances have been preserved. And here's one. This is from 2015, Professor Jay Sammons leading the band in a rendition of John Mayall's Walking on Sunset with an additional verse uh, contributed by Professor Sammons. So here we go with Walking on Sunset. <laughs> would like to offer this song called Going to the Virtual Show. Fish Worship Band, Going to the Virtual Show, and it's going to be a great show, folks. <laughs> Sky. 
dead about some twins and what they don't know. Some things change, some things less so. Let's go, go to the virtual show. Temporary references, salacious puns, gonna be a whole lot of virtual fun. No need to even move your feet. The show comes to you in your same old seat. Professor Klein, for class, classics nation, icon claps of appreciation. Let's go, go to the virtual show. Here we go, going to the virtual show. Thank you so much, Brian. That was wonderful. Well, hope people liked it. I'm trying to stop the share here, but it won't do it. I don't know why. Can you do it? Uh, yeah, let me try. But um, I, I guess everyone, if you could, you know what, if you can unmute yourselves for a second and just have a round of thunderous applause for our fish worship. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. The Thank best, you, the best. Of course, the best, the best. Um, welcome, welcome once again. Thank you. Thank you to Brian and the band. I, I, again, the show must go on in what a creative and, and fun way um, for it to go on. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, Thanks for so having us. Of course. So yeah, I'll just um, say a second welcome before we dive in. Um, and if you uh, were joining us a little late, what I'm going to do actually is put in the chat box for all of you to share. This is the um, the virtual background that was designed by Julia Armington. Um, here it is, um, who's a student in CL229. And she um, painted this beautiful background of Stuvi, which is, um, I guess, in BU, BU West. Um, so if you're in the cast, I'll invite you to uh, use this as your virtual background. If you're not in the cast, um, well, hopefully you'll keep your camera off, but you will have this in case you would like to use it as a virtual background for future Zoom meetings. Um, and if you're wondering, in fact, how to um, hide uh, non-video participants, we have instructions here on this uh, original PowerPoint. This way, it will be as close to a theatrical production as we can get, where you'll just see the actors um, on stage. Um, one last um, one last document coming around, and that is the playbill for our show today, um, which has the names of the actors and the roles that they'll be playing. Yeah. All right, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our prologue. Everybody enjoy the show. Okay, is it me? Is it me? Am I on? Am I on? Am I on? Hey, guys. Okay, okay. Come on. Wait, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Give me a sec. Give me a minute here. Give me a. Um, I've got to get people into the Zoom meet. Damn this. Uh, okay. I hope everybody's hanging in there. Get your vaccines. Wear wear your mask. Wear your mask. Wear your mask. Go, my mask. Mask. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh no no! I don't need the mask. Never mind. Never mind. Don't need the mask. Okay. Um. Okay. Stay safe, guys. Okay, the agenda for today is a presentation by Plotus. Uh, not Greek, but good, 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 good. Okay, as always, I have to keep you, we keep it respectful in the chat room. You all know it can be long, but we try to keep it brief. All right, team. Okay. So, what we have here today was originally taken from the Greek. Duh. Well, of course, right? But we can put our own spin on it. Uh, we love the Greek stuff, and we'll get back to the Greek stuff. It'll be fine. But this is Boston, home of the Sox, Boston strong. This is exciting. We can do this. So, backstory. Just to recap, just to recap, recap, where we at before we dive into the presentation. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a middle-aged man. Cashier Keynes, that was a long, long time ago, and his wife, slide, gave birth to twin boys, and they were so identical that they could easily amass a following over a million on TikTok. 
um, or so and so. See, my I don't seem to be able to get it on my Flips phone, but um, but anyways, I hear over a million. Okay. One day, okay, these twin boys, not yet of legal drinking age, so their father brought one of them to work with him on the night of a BUBC hockey game. Um, and in the post-game rush, and you guys know how this happens, the boy got lost. So an RA, slide, sees the boy, and of course you would take him for like a freshman, he's wandering around lost and confused, brought him back to West Campus and adopted him into Rich Hall. So his family thought, of course, that he was lost forever, kidnapped by BC. Eventually this news was passed across campus through a series of tweets, the BU administration got it, and the news reached the boy's grandfather. He, of course, had a mental breakdown walking along combat, as one would. And instead of calling the mom for advice, that's what he should have done, he decided to change the name of his remaining grandson to that of the lost grandson. Okay, so this is where the audience participation comes in, guys. Okay, I'm known for cold calling. So everybody get ready. Okay. So okay. I'm gonna be as clear as humanly possible here. It's all in the script. Okay, the twin boys now have the same name, and that name is Manny. You got it? Two twins, both named Manny. Everyone got that? Okay, so we're all gonna say that together. Okay, so you can for real, you can you can unmute yourself for a moment. Everybody ready? Okay, let's see whether they can do this. Okay, all together now. Both twins are named Mary. Mary. Oh, you guys did it! Hub credit all the way around. Good teamwork. Okay, they say Zoom learning doesn't work. Okay, now mute yourself again. Right. Okay. So where were we? Okay. Back to the PowerPoint prologue. So this RA who adopts the boy had very little mind. Now, I don't know what this means, but I'm assuming it's okay because the class wrote it. Um, but apparently the RA had great hookups, whatever that is. Anyway, when the RA's parents told him he couldn't return to campus last fall, we're not gonna go into that backstory. He left everything he had to the boy. So we're talking a set of those cool LED lights a really nice fake ID that actually scans a target and a group of seniors willing to pull him into a Stuvi 2 apartment. Sweet or what? Now the son lives here in this lovely apartment with the really cool LED lights and empty bottles of decorations and his three best bros. Gotta love keeping up with all their quarantine fun, Snapchats, Instagram stories, tweets all day every day up on that oh, wait hang on checking the phone checking the phone okay oh okay so according to snapchat it's funny i can get this on this phone um the brother from danielson is journeying right now to stuvi on the green line with his father's favorite underpaid intern in an attempt to find his long lost twin is that a coincidence guys or what is that a coincidence a final note, before we officially begin, this play of course takes place in Boston, but it could be in any city. And I invite you to think of it in that way. Slide, is it ancient Epidominus, Rome, Boston, a sci-fi alternate reality, virtual reality, cyberspace, no place that we'll call Zoom? Yes, it is. It's all of those places and none of those places all at the same time. So too, with the characters in the same way we are all screaming into the void on Twitter, each of us changing our profile pics and our bios and pin tweets to create new versions of ourselves to look more professional or cool or incredibly attractive to that one Tinder match we gave our social media handle to. The roles in this play are also glossy stereotypes, but hey, online personas are always larger than life. So anyways, I got to head back to the department. Anybody wants me to pick up anything from the North End? A couple of cannolis, Regina pizza, right? Just let me know. 
I expect you to Venmo me up front. If you don't, I probably won't get anything. And if you do, I definitely won't get anything. But got to supplement the salary somehow. Oh, God. Oops. OK, so I've talked so long, and we've gotten nowhere. Standard Zoom meeting. Off we go. Hello, everyone. My name is Richard, but everyone calls me Dickie. It's probably because when I eat, I tend not to share with anybody, even if you're starving at my side. I'm the type of guy that takes the last two containers of the dining hall with a line of people behind me, and everyone knows someone like me. Maybe some of you are that person. What can I say? Dude's got to eat, and I always come prepared. Well, when I'm hungry, which is all the time, I will do or say anything to get those limitless roofs of Diet Coke, that bonus bag of chips, that side of guac with my Chipotle, all for free. I know which side my bread is buttered on. Oh, now I'm hungry again. Hey, at least I'm not scooting over other interns by ratting them out for their three hour lunch breaks. No, I know how the system works and I know how to work the system. Here's the secret sauce. If you want people to hang out with you, to like your Facebook post, to be your wingman at sunset, it's simple. Bribe them with dinner. Or homework answers, but mostly dinner. That's how you secure their loyalty. The worse the dining hall food gets, the more they'll need you. How can I put this better? Oh, off the top of my head, I'd say it's kind of like the relationship between an ancient Greek slave and his master. Or an ancient Roman kindness patron. Or... Hmm an unpaid intern and the guy whose father might offer him a job once he graduates. But that's enough, that's enough advice on how to make friends and influence people. Any minute now, I'm meeting my most magnanimous meal ticket, my main man, Manny. No one throws around free food like him. I've never seen anyone with a mini fridge packed as tight as his. The guy's got more snacks than the convenience store at the GSU. His dinners would outdo the best of the Butte dining service. He piles up the tables so high you need to swing from the chandelier like Sia to get anything from the top of that stack. Look, I love my family and all, but it's been a year of quarantine together. We're driving each other nuts. Ah, nuts. Now, ah, I need a night out and maybe some ho, ho geese. Gotta keep it family friendly after all. Ah, man, he's here now. He's uh, joining the Zoom call. Don't be such a Karen, Karen. What's with the Inquisition? What are you, Pope Gregory the Ninth? A reporter for TMZ? Enough with the questions. Every time I go out, you pester me. Call me back. Give me the third degree. What am I doing? Where am I going? Who am I seeing? If you ask me one more question, that's it. You can pack your things and move back in with your parents. What do you have to complain about? I give you everything you want and more. Gold jewelry up to your elbows, 12 iPhone 12s, more shoes than there are feet in this world. I bring you all the bling I can swing, and yet you still cling and sting and hand ring and accuse me of having a fling. I don't think he realizes that his video and mic are on. Now I will speak in an aside so you can't hear me, but I will also tell you the truth for once. I am going to see my side chick, the anti-Karen, the lovely Miss Sheila Blige, who lives right next door. He may think he's chewing at his girlfriend, but I'm the one who'll be out of chewing. If we can't go back to his place, where am I supposed to eat? And check this out. I've stolen your BU sweatshirt, and I'm giving it to my boo. Boo. What the? Dickie, is that you? Is my camera on? And your mic. Don't worry. It's just me and the, uh, the 81 other participants in the Zoom call. Bro, you couldn't have come at a better time. That's kind of my jam. Mm. Jam. Wait until you see what I've got here. I'd rather it was something I could taste. Check this out. What on earth is that? I'll tell you, but first, tell me I'm the man. Tell me where we're going to eat. Tell me I'm the man. Man, I've been craving Panda Express. Tell me I'm the man, Dickie. Yes, yes, you're the man, Manny. Anything else you want to add? And a very handsome guy with an amazing hairdo. Oh, go on. 
I can't go on unless I know what's going on. What's with all that drama with Karen just now? Take a whiff of this. What does it smell of? I'd rather not. At least offer me something that's not the armpit. All right, then sniff here, dear dainty dicky. Very well. Well, what does it smell like? <laughs> Well, it certainly smells like echoes from the void. Are we, are we good? Right. Can Robert use Robert mute? We're getting some feedback. Okay, are we good? Fantastic. Okay, where were we? All right, the sweater. It smells like a side swipe, a side chick, and a side dish. I couldn't have put it better myself. I will now take this BU sweatshirt, which I have stolen from my overly clingy girlfriend, Karen, and I will give it to my sweet pea side piece, Sheila Blige. Let's text her and make plans to eat an amazing breakfast together and then party like it's the second century BCE. Or maybe the third century, I don't know. Plautus' dates are pretty tenuous. Perfect. Uh, should I send her a link to the Zoom meeting? Send it. No, 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 wait, wait, stop. What's the holdup? We could be eating breakfast by now. Yeah, but what are you going to say in your text? You got to be smooth. <laughs> Trust me. You don't got to try too hard with Chill Blige. Bacon, eggs, waffles. Are you in? Wait, stop. She just signed into the meeting. There's timing for you. Look, isn't she the most foxy chick you've ever seen? Manny! My manly man, my manly man, Manny, is that you? Hey, what about me? What about you? What do you bring to the table? <laughs> Doesn't matter, as long as I'm at it. Sheila, Sheila Blige, my schnooky wee schnookums, I've missed you. Bye, President Bobby Brown. I can't take my girlfriend much longer. Karen is the worst. All she does is spy on me and yell at me and read conspiracy theories on Twitter. Who is this Q guy anyway? Maybe the reason she's so cold is because you've taken her sweatshirt. Here, this is yours. I went to great lengths to steal it for you. You stole your girlfriend's clothing for me? I'm not really sure what to say to that. How thoughtful? It'll look better on you anyway. It brings out your sunny complexion. Is it, are we working? Are That's we? just the zoom filter, but thank you. Oh, Manny, you're so good to me. Much better than the many, many, many other men uh, who give me stuff. And you're a very handsome guy. Oh, please. And you're a very handsome guy. I have some self-respect. Seems she's more attracted to the sparkle of his black Amex credit card than the sparkle of his eyes. Oh, I'm so in love. Follow me out here, guys. Is there like an eye roll emoji reaction or something? It was a really expensive sweater. It cost more than my PS5. <laughs> sure. You had the price of BU tuition. It's expensive, huh? Now I love it even more. Do you know what I want? No, but just name it. I want a beast of a feast. Strips of bacon creased and greased. Crispy waffles made with yeast. Fresh fruit slices piece by piece. And last but not least. Yes. Some toast. 
That was disappointing, both as a rhyme and a breakfast order. Of course, whatever you want, my love. I've got to run some errands at the GSU, but I'll be back soon. You're coming with me, right, Dickie? What am I, your nanny, Manny? I'll count the minutes until you return. Hey, Stu! Stu the cook, get your pots and pans in here. With your... I was watching Top Chef. We're throwing a party. You gotta go shopping. Who's coming? Manny and his dicky. Not dicky. Ugh, he eats like a BU student on lobster roll night. We might as well plan to pretend. What are you gonna make, Stu? How about chicken cordon bleu? Barbecue? Cheese fondue? It's dicky. Anything he can chew will do. Ah, chew. Bless you. <laughs> There's no way I'll be able to get everything done in time. The planning, the shopping, the schlepping, the prepping. And I've got to make sure that Remy doesn't fall in. Ugh, I saw him scurrying around Warren this morning. Simmer down, Stu. Oh, oh, the decor. The decor. Put a lid on it, Stu. You got any more of those terrible cooking puns in your back pocket? Chop, chop. Okay, okay, I'm going. I'll be back as soon as I can. I hope the elevator doesn't take forever this time. It'll be here before the BU bus. Ah, we're finally here. BU Central. There's nothing better than getting off the tea. I can one up that, returning home. Why are we here? Can't we go back to East Campus? At least it didn't take as long as BC girls trying to get to a better BU frat party. We're here to find my long lost bro. We've been looking for six years. Yes, that's right, six years. That's how long it takes to travel down Calm Ave on the B line during rush hour. What's the point? Too much time and money down the drain, like a BU degree. <laughs> you might as well be searching for a needle in a haystack. Actually, you would have found the needle by now. For all we know, he's at the bottom of the Charles. We gotta keep trying, gotta keep our heads held high. There's always gonna be another mountain, always gonna be, wanna make it move. Just like you should be, let's go. This isn't the climb, that's so 2009. Let's just go back to East. Mm, quit your complaining, it's pointless. But not priceless at this point. I want to tell him I can't stand him enough to remain his intern. I shouldn't be saying this, but he's persistent. He's going to lose everything at this weird university, and I don't get paid enough for these shenanigans. I'll be careful. Just give me our money. Oh, no. I'm hanging on to it. What are you worried about? You'll blow the money on late night. They have the best crispy chicken rumps, let me tell you. Oh, sorry. What are you being such a Richard today? Fine, take it. Stew. Sorry, my internet. <laughs> oh, crab cakes. There's Manny. He's here early. Sheena, Sheila's going to be so mad when she finds out that the food's not ready yet. I'll go talk to him. Hey, man. Who are you? Who am I? I'm Stu. I don't care, I if, don't care if you're soup or stew. Um, okay. Who are you? Name's Miss but they call me messy because I'm always cleaning up other people's messes. Where is your dicky? My what now? I told you these West Campus people were crazy. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Listen, I, I don't know what's gotten into you, but you're too early. I, I just got back from Star Market. Leave me alone, weirdo. I don't know you well enough for you to piss me off this much. You, you, you don't know what it, it's me, Stu. Stu Ped is more like it. Uh, we have class together. 
I've never seen you before in my life. Yeah, well, I know you. Your Manny, the one who keeps the hockey benches warm. How do you know my name? Uh, like I said, I'm from class. And Sheila, Sheila Blige. What will she oblige exactly? Listen, New England clam chowder. Hey, it's Stu. I have no clue who you are or what you're talking about. <laughs> wow, you must be drinking like it's Marathon Monday. How many Coronas have you had? Dude, too soon for a Corona joke. Someone make me co-host so I can mute this guy. Bro, I only drink White Claw. What kind of manny are you if you drink White Claw? I'm a seltzer kind of guy. I don't know why we're gendering alcohol, but we don't have time to unpack all that. I'm looking for someone. Don't you live in West? I wouldn't live in a freshman dorm if you paid me. Manny, you lie more than lying, Ted. Bro, what do you want from me? He's always like this, especially when Karen's not around. It's like they're already married. What are you talking about, you half-baked half-wit? Okay, okay. We seem to have gotten sidetracked somehow. Let's get back on topic. Is this enough food? Or do you think I'll have to make more for your side chick and your sidekick? Side chick? Sidekick? I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the one worth talking to. The one who actually has convenience points left. Listen, uh, Stu, was it? You enjoy your make-believe meal and your delusional dickies. My friend and I are just gonna go now. Don't go too far. Breakfast will be ready soon. Sure, sure. Breakfast will be ready soon. Get ready to run, Messy. I'll let Sheila Blige know you're here. I kind of like the sound of her name. Maybe we should meet her. Stay on guard. I wouldn't trust her, especially not with a crock pot working for her. But how did he know my name? Hussies and hustlers all play the same game. They cyberstalk you and learn everything there is to know about you. Then they con you, and not only do they take your money, but your dignity and reputation too. You gotta be careful, man. Don't be like one of those brads during Cheggate. You're right. Don't worry, I'll watch out for you. Quiet, somebody's coming. Here, hug your man purse. They won't notice you if they don't see it. I want my door to stay open. It's important to keep a good vibe in the room. Always make sure to have lounge chairs from CAS and candles to burn. Yes, even if the eyes say it's a fire hazard. Oh, there's Manny. That kid spends more money on me like few parents spend money on their life savings or their kids' tuition. I'm truly living a great life. Hello, my love. It feels like an eternity since we last saw each other three scenes ago. Who's this bimbo? And who is she talking to? Oh, please. You know I'm talking to you, my big, strong, manny man, man, man. I know we all act confused with these little boxes on Zoom to get away with stuff. Anyway, are you coming over? Uh, I would just like to say, I called it. I told you she's a grifter. The way she talks to me, it's like my Instagram is in private. I guess I really need to check on my security settings. Your breakfast is getting cold. What is it with these people and their food? Don't worry, bro, I got your back. Madam, you say you know my friend. Might I ask, uh, from where? Of course, it's the same place as always, Alston. Alston, but he has never been to Alston. I guess she sniffed out your man purse. I knew Zoom had a scent feature. Oh, thank Jesus. Take my man purse so I'll know her true intentions. Let's go get this bread. What bread? Oh. Oops, I meant bread fast, not bread. Who wants bread? Silly me. Bread doesn't mean money in any context. Would you like eggs with your very real bread for breakfast in the apartment? Thanks for the invite. Invite? You asked me for a beast of a feast, don't you remember? Strips of bacon creased and greased, crispy waffles made with yeast, fresh fruit slices piece by piece, and last but not least... Yeah? 
Close. That makes absolutely no sense, and it doesn't even rhyme. I asked you for all that? Yes, you did, for yourself and your dicky. Madam, please, uh, control yourself. Are you feeling okay? Are you? Let's try this again. Do you remember seeing me this morning and giving me the BU sweatshirt that you stole from your girlfriend? I don't have a girlfriend. I know, sweetie. You talk about dumping her all the time. There is no girlfriend to dump. What happens in Alston doesn't stay in Alston, no matter how much you try to deny it. What am I denying? That you gave me your girlfriend's stolen BU sweatshirt today. That didn't happen. I've never been cuffed by a girl, not even in cuffing season. Also, I haven't been to this part of campus since orientation. You must have me confused with someone else. Aren't you Manny, son of Danny, from East Campus? Uh, yes. Maybe you really have cyber-stalked me after all. Obviously, you know a lot. Maybe we can hang out, if only so I can figure out what the Hades is going on. Are you kidding me? Dude, this is obviously a setup. Would you please be quiet? If I made a Twitter thread about this, no one would even believe me. This is too funny a situation to pass up on. Ignore him. Now, where are we? You were coming over? I'll be right there. What about your dicky? I'm sure he'll be just fine. If he turns up, I can always ask Stu to take care of him. Um, By the way, about your girlfriend's BU sweatshirt, could you do me a favor and add a little something for me? I just found this really cute patch design online and I'm dying to see what it will look like. Okay. Great, you're the best. I'm going inside now, see you soon. Messi, are you still there? I'm still here, just silently judging you. I know what you're gonna say, okay? If you assume I'm going to be annoyed, you're right. I'm going to do it. I'm going to meet up with her. You're making a big mistake. Listen, take my things to the Marriott Hotel, then come back and meet me just before sunset. What about our search? What about your brother? It's been six years. What's a few more hours? You know she's playing you, right? <laughs> when in Rome. This isn't Rome. This isn't even really Boston. This isn't really anywhere. <sighs> Yeah, he's screwed all right. His Uber's headed straight off a cliff. I can't really do anything to stop him though, so I might as well try to help him. Sorry, one sec. Uh, <clears throat> I've been alive for 20 years now. I'm all grown up. And on my own, and this is by far the worst thing that's ever happened to me. We were just hanging around in the middle of GSU when a bunch of student groups suddenly surrounded us and trying to make us sign up for their mailing lists and whatever. I got separated from Manny, and by extension, the hot and gooey cinnamon rolls gonna ask him by me. They almost took away my comfort diet coke. Well, since I didn't eat my pre-breakfast or breakfast, no, nah, no, I'm all hungry now. Uh, I should see if I can swing by Starbucks real quick and wait, who's that who just joined the waiting room? I'm going to turn my video off now so I can eavesdrop on him undetected. So I show up at the Sheila Blige's apartment and she tosses this garland on my head, throws this BU sweatshirt at me and tells me to FedEx it to someone on Etsy so they could be dazzle the Hades out of it. I have no idea what any of these words mean. <laughs> That's him. That's Manny. Why is he carrying the BU sweatshirt? I thought he gave it to Sheila Blige. Hmm, he must have gone back to see her. 
or upon she returned it to him and asked him to FedEx it to someone out of, on Etsy so they could bedazzle the Hades out of it. Do you know what this means? Do you know what this means? It means he ate the entire breakfast without me. Yeah, I'm petty enough to want revenge. I'll sit and wait for it all day. Still, I can't complain. Thank the almighty President Brown. I've been blessed with the company of a dime piece and a feast fit for two. And I've carried off this cool BU sweatshirt. Nike, just steal it. Hmm. A feast fit for two. That's my food he's talking about. Hey. Our food. That Peppa Pig. To think I didn't have a single girlfriend when I woke up this morning, and now I have two. Or at least that's what people keep telling me. I'll just keep smiling and nodding and taking the free stuff they give me. All right, that's it. I'm going to give this man a piece of my mind. Nobody double crosses Dickie. He's made a huge mistake. Hmm. Steak. What do you have to say for yourself, you greedy chunk, you fake friend? You ditched me in the GSU and went back to Sheila's all by yourself to wine and dine and lay there all supine. You, you, porcupine. Hmm. Pork. Oh, there. Who are you? Ouch. Seriously? Not cool, man. You really know how to wound a guy pretending you don't know my name. I'm not pretending, bro. I've never seen you before in my life. If you don't just leave me alone, we won't have a problem. Hello, Manny. How many mimosas did you have at breakfast exactly? How do you know my name? Are you kidding me right now? Listen, bro, I just want to be on my way to FedEx. I knew it. The truth is there, plain to see, on this soon-to-be-bedazzled to be you sweatshirt. You must have been to Sheila's to get it. I've cut you red-handed. I feel sorry for you, crazy man. Oh, you've done it now. I'm going straight to Karen, and I'm going to tell her everything. You're going to wish you never ate breakfast without your dicky. What is going on? I feel like everyone at this school is on one big inside joke except for me. Oh, look, someone else just joined the Zoom meeting. Who is it now? Manny, Sheila Oblige says pretty, pretty please take this bracelet to the jewelers and make it bourgeoisie. We're looking for drip. Okay, and who are you supposed to be exactly? Ma'am, I'm Goldie Digger. Sheila obliges personal assistant. Oh, uh, yes, right. And we have definitely met before. Sheila was right. You are acting even weirder and than usual today. Do you recognize the bling? Um, should I? This is the ice you stole from your girlfriend, Karen. You Alston rat. What? Steal? I would never. The bracelet proves otherwise. Are you calling me a liar? I ain't calling you a truther. Give it back. Um, you know, now that I think about it, I do recognize this bracelet. It looks really expensive. Oh, whatever. Shall I tell Sheila that you'll... <laughs> Oh, I'll take care of it all right. And I'll make sure that the sweatshirt and the bracelet are brought back together. Wink. Did you say wink? <laughs> it's really hard to convey subtle facial expressions over Zoom. Mm. Maybe I can get a little something out of this deal. Hey, Manny, macho Manny man. While you're at the jewelers, how about you pick me up? A little something. Maybe some earrings and some nice epi pennants? X, X, I, V, 
okay. What is XXIVK? 184 carats, you idiot, baby. <laughs> sure, just give me the money for it. Use your own, you know, I'm good for it. How about you give me the cash and I'll give you double eventually? Mm. I have plenty of convenient points and an empty tea card. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Great. See you later, Manny. <laughs> I don't know who these women are or why they keep giving me all this expensive swag, but I'm not complaining. Hashtag blessed. Wait, why am I standing around yammering? Now is my chance to get away. Make haste, no time to waste. I'll take off this garland and throw it to the left. That way, if they follow me, they'll think I went that way. Now, if I can, I'll go and meet my intern so that he can bask in my amazing luck. Uh, how am I supposed to stay in this relationship when my boyfriend is such a scrub? He steals my stuff and he gives them to his side hoe. I mean, who does that? With whom can I register a complaint? Don't be such a Karen, Karen. Ah, come with me. We'll catch him in the act. All right. So I saw it, I saw it in a snap story. It was summer near Marsh Plaza. Wearing a garland for some reason and carrying your stolen BU sweatshirt. But wait. <clears throat> this is the garland he had on. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Must have gone this way. Let's follow his trail. And there he is. But where is your BU sweatshirt? Oh, he's so fake. He's worse than a BC student. What am I going to do now? Yeah, what you always do, just tear him a new one. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's turn our cameras off so we can eavesdrop on him undetected. Okay. Man, that trip to the GSU took forever. These sweaty swarms of students swept in, swooped down, and surrounded us on all sides, trying to make us sign up for their mailing list like every other time people these days. Sheesh, all they want is followers. They're all, I need more likes, this, and follow for follow that. Get over yourselves. Do you really not have anything better to do? Don't you know that employers look at your socials when they're hiring you, and if you f they find anything too crazy, bam, you don't get hired. So maybe care a little less about all your followers and that nonsense. I can't wait to get back to Sheila Blige and eat our breakfast. She's waited for me, I'm sure. I suppose that she'll be mad at me for being so late. But that BU sweatshirt I stole from my girlfriend for her should appease her. You hear that? Every word. My boyfriend is such a deadbeat. Uh, you want to keep listening? Yes. I want to find out how much, how many more feet you can fit in his mouth. All right, cool. Uh, let's uh, turn our videos off and get back to eavesdropping. Jesus, my girlfriend Karen is the worst, except hopefully when she's grading my exam after this. I can't wait to get back to my schnoogie woogie wookum Sheila Blige. First, I'm going to go inside and freshen up. You're not going anywhere, bud. Dickie, where'd you go? I thought I lost you, man. Oh, d d don't you dickie me around. You seem hangry. Let's head over to Sheila's and have our long overdue breakfast. Ah, gotcha. I know what's transpired, what you've conspired and desired to acquire. I've caught you in barbed wire. You're in quite a dire quagmire. You liar, liar, pants on fire. Karen, baby, you look gorgeous today. Is that a new hat? McDreamy is trying to sweet talk you, Karen. Was I talking to you, Dickie? You've got a lot of nerve and a lot of explaining to do. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, he knows, that snake. He's just pretending. Is there a problem with one of your maids? Are they posting about you on Facebook again? You are unbelievable. 
Thank you. Is there anything that uh, you want to tell me? Your hair looks nice today. Maybe about a, uh, a certain BU sweater. Oh, look, he's starting to sweat. Er. Oops, I, I think my Wi-Fi is cutting out. You're breaking up, Karen. That's right. I am breaking up with you. Unless you promise to return my BU sweatshirt and to never see your side hoe again. I deserve better than this. Dickie, what the Hades is going on? You ate breakfast without me. I'm just getting my revenge. Yes, queen, pop off. I didn't eat breakfast without you. I didn't steal your BU sweatshirt. I don't have a side hoe. What I do have is a headache. Fake news. Dude, what are you doing to me? You see that? He's signaling for me to shut my mouth. Karen, baby, I swear to Jupiter, Jesus, Allah, Buddha, and anyone else who will listen. I didn't do anything. Mm, you're just digging yourself deeper, man. Mm. Oh, you're doubling down? Is this how it's going to be? Where's my sweatshirt, Manny? Which sweatshirt? You have so many, Karen, and they all look so good on you. My BU sweatshirt, dingus. Can you misplace it? No. Did someone steal it? Yes. And they know who they are. I'm just waiting to see if they're man enough to admit it. Okay, Karen, you've got me there. You win. I'll get your BU sweatshirt back. You are not coming home until you do. You stay in the doghouse where you belong. From now on, I'm keeping you on an even tighter leash. Cool. Well, now that that's taken care of, so what do I get for helping you? I'll be sure to repay the favor next time your sweatshirt and your dignity are stolen. Not that two of you deserve each other. I'm going to the GSU to find a new pancake patron. <laughs> I'm leaving too, and I want my BU sweatshirt back pronto. Karen thinks she's punishing me by locking me out of the house, as if I don't have better places to go. I'll just mosey on over to Sheila Blige's. She'll let me in. I'll beg her for her sweatshirt back and buy her a new one that's nicer. Hello, Sheila, are you there? Manny, is that you? What are you doing back so soon? What are you talking about? I haven't seen you since this morning. You've been acting strange all day, Manny. Are you okay? Again, I've been gone all day. Haven't been around to act strange. Ah, ha, 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 ha. always such a kidder. Do you know why I'm here? Because I got what you need? In fact, yeah. Remember that BU sweatshirt I stole from Karen and gave to you? Well, she kind of found out about it and now she's super mad. And I'm gonna need it back and I'll just, I'll just buy you something nicer, okay? Manny, this is getting ridiculous. I gave you the BU sweater and Karen's bracelet just moments ago. You took them to FedEx and the jewel jewelers for me. You must be tripping. I never gave those things. You never gave those things to me. You couldn't have. Like I said, I haven't seen you since this morning. Look, what are you playing at here, Manny? You trying to scam me or something? Oh, Sheila, what happened to your voice? Look, whatever this is, it ain't worth it. Why do you go take some time to find yourself and figure out who you are? Don't bother calling me until you do. Side piece, out. Whoa, Jesus, women, am I right? Everything's been so upside down today. I don't know what to make of any of it. Wait a minute, could it be me? Could I be the issue here? That's something I've never considered before. I'll go for a walk along Calm Ave and call my mom. Maybe she'll have some advice. Epidemic, where has Masenio gone? He was supposed to meet me here. He's probably spending all his money at the BU pub. Time to pop back into the Zoom room to see if my no good boyfriend brought back my BU sweatshirt. Oh, snap. There he is. I see him. There's my sweatshirt. Thank President Brown. I wonder what he has to say for himself. Hmm. I wonder what's keeping messy. A fine mess you've made. 
Oh, Lord, what now? I'll take my BU sweatshirt, please, and an apology. I've lost track of whose this is, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't belong to you. Is that all you have to say to me? What else is there to say? I don't know you. Excuse me? We have no relationship with one another. Not anymore, we don't. You seem kind of like Hecuba, you know, a uh, bitch. We didn't change that. It's right there in the ancient texts, y'all. Manny, how could you say that to me? Geez, don't be such a Karen. I'm so confused and also angry, but mostly confused. Maybe we do have something in common after all. <laughs> you are literally so disgusting, I can't deal with you. I'm going to get my father and he'll make you sorry. Great. Maybe his ancient wisdom will help shed some light on all this. All this zooming is too much for an old man like me. People these days and all their newfangled technology. By the time you figure out one new thing, there's another newer thing. I can't keep up with all this. You all make fun of me now, but when you get old, you'll see all the trials and tribulations of keeping up with all the latest gadgets and knickknacks. But this is important to me, so I'll deal with it. Out of nowhere, my daughter wants to Zoom. I think she's squabbling with her husband again since she only ever calls the bitch about him. Women nowadays, always picking fights with their husbands. Finally, I, I got this damn thing to work. How are you? Why the long faces? Uh, Daddy, your camera isn't on. You, you have to click the little button. No, not, not that one. I can't figure this darn thing out. Ah, oh, there we go. So, what are you two squabbling about this time? And keep it short, my soaps are on. He's cheating on me. So? You're such a pain in the Asinaria. That's another play of Plautus. That I don't blame him. Why are you taking his side? You're my dad. Yeah, but you're such a Karen, Karen. But dad, he's stealing my stuff. Look, he's literally wearing my BU sweater and bracelet as we speak. Well, that's a horse of a different color. Adultery is one thing, theft another. Adultery? Theft? What is this real housewives of Epidamnus? Look, Manny, I know Karen can sometimes be a little bit of a Karen, but come on. <sighs> You kids can work this out. What's this I hear about you stealing from her? I don't know who any of you people are or what you're talking about. Come on, Manny, you remember me. I took everyone out for dinner at Pizzeria Uno in Kenmore Square last family and friends weekend. I'm Karen's dad, Steve. You all decided to call me Boomer. Okay, Boomer, but I still don't know you or your horrible daughter. See, I told you he was acting crazy. Hmm, why would he pretend not to know us? Maybe he has gone crazy. It's been a rough year for all of us. Maybe he just cracked? Huh. They want crazy. I'll show them crazy. I'm going to pretend to be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Maybe then they'll finally leave me alone. Dad, he's talking to himself again. That's called an aside, sweetie. <laughs> What's that, Apollo? Bill Gates is using iPhones to plant microchips in our brains? Yeah, I, I suppose you think that's an aside. The moon landing was a hoax. Now, Manny, just take it easy. Meghan Markle is a robot built to destroy the royal family. How dare you? Say what you like about me, but don't you dare come after Meghan. I'm leaving. Who knew that that would be the line? Oh well, good riddance. Now that I got rid of Karen, it's time to get rid of this old dinosaur. I know you've been under a lot of stress lately, but you've got to get it together, man. I'm coming for you next, Boomer. I'm the co-host now, and I'm gonna mute you. What? No! I think it's time to find Messy and get the 80s out of here before I really go out of my mind. Finally, I figured out how to unmute myself. 
All it took was pressing every single button on my keyboard and a few on some random kitchen appliances. Sweet President Brown, Manny's gone off the deep end. I'm gonna try and give, get him a telehealth consult with a doctor. Hmm, here we go. This guy's got a professional looking Facebook ad. Doc, Doc Goose. It says here that he's trusted by the American Academy of Astrology and specializes in holistic planetary therapy. The reviews claimed his predictions and diagnosis were life-changing, all with just one session. Oh, he's in the waiting room now. How do I add him again? Oh, Mr. Boomer, I presume. Do you mind if I put on some music? We need to get into the right vibe before I start the session. <sighs> la, 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 la. Okay, tell me more about your daughter's fiance, Manny. Does he ever get really hungry when Venus is in retrograde? Or does he grow a beard on nights with a full moon? Is he sleeping all day and partying all night? What's wrong with him? I do request that you call me by my proper name of Steve, Doc Doc Goose. And do you really think if I knew what was wrong with him, I would have called you? No, I need you to help me and use your head for something besides a hat rack and cure the kid. Hey Amen, chill man. I help tons of people like this guy. People say I have a special connection with the powers upstairs. I know, which is why I trust you. He really needs someone like you to set him straight. Don't worry. By the time I'm done, you won't be able to recognize him. He will be healed or my name isn't Doc Doc Goose. Ah, he's in the waiting room now. Let's see what the star signs have to say. My day has been screwed from both ends since that dicky poked holes in all of my plans. He's gone and spilled my secret schemes like some sort of snitch. He's the type of person who reminds the professor to collect the homework. Gross. What a dicky. If I make it out of this, I'll wring his neck myself and uh, Karen's the worst. She'll oblige is not that much better. She deceived me like all cam girls do. Epidem it all. Look, he's talking to himself again. Man, he sounds miserable, man. What are you doing just sitting there? Go talk to him. <clears throat> hey, man, what's going on? Mind if we have a little gapshish? Mano a mano, or I guess many a mano? Your soon-to-be father-in-law messaged me and asked if he could talk. I hear a lot is going on right now. My soon-to-be father-in-law? Well, that's just great. I have some medical advice for you. Why don't you spend some time in Warren and catch the freshman flu? So, what do you think, Doc? What do I think? It matters not what I think. It matters what the celestial beings think. Let me ask some more questions to try to feel out his aura more. What's your sign, man? What, like my astrological sign? Yeah, dude. We in the profession like to call it your soul sign. But what are you, an Aries? Because you're giving me Aries vibes right now. My soul sign? The only sign you need is the BU seal, which you should go and step on. Dear Lord, he's losing it. Also, who is this Aries? We use Mars around here. What's next? Are you gonna ask if my Jupiter is in retrograde or what my morning horoscope said? Or do you just want me to take a BuzzFeed quiz about what kind of Lizzie McGuire character I could be? Based off the cereal I ate this morning. Oh no, doctor, can you help him? He's worse off than I thought. You need to give him some of your signature vitamin supplements before he starts filming one of those stupid dancing challenges. I'll ask the, all the questions here. Um, Manny, do you consider yourself a playful and curious person? What? Oh yeah, I'm really curious. Um, do you consider yourself to be an extrovert? Always trying to be everywhere at once? I guess, I'm always partying on the weekends. Yes, just as I predicted. So you hate being alone, correct? 
Yeah, I'd rather be with other people. Are we done? Please tell me this is over now. Patience, please. My patient. Tell me you were born between May 21st and June 20th? Yeah. Oh, I have a diagnosis. What? What is it, doctor? He's not an Aries. He's a, wait for it, Gemini. I don't get it. Neither do I. It may be relevant in another scene or two, or not. Who can really understand the mysteries of the universe? Doc, does that explain why he was saying all those crazy things before? You know, about Bill Gates and the moon landing and Meghan Markle? I said what now? You were ranting about all these random conspiracy theories. It was like whoever edited this scene just Googled popular conspiracy theories and stuck them straight into the script. When did I say all those things exactly? Just a moment ago. Boomer, this is the first time I've seen you since last year's family and friends weekend when we all went out for dinner at that Pizzeria Uno in the Kenmore Square. May it rest in peace. Doc, Doc, Goose, something is wrong with this man. I feel like we need to do some deeper meditation. Call an Uber and bring him over to my place. You think that will help? Of course. I'll have stronger supplies to help break through to the real many. Once he sits in my sanctuary, we can communicate better with the stars and we will bring his son out of retrograde. Manny, I'll be sure to give you all the essential oils you need. Go dunk yourself in frying oil, you quack. Sir, Dr. Goose is no quack. I'm a licensed medical professional and personal chef and trainer and occasional classics professor. Boomer, you get him over to my place. I'll meet you there. Will do. Looks like Dumb and Dumber are gone. Or should I be Doc and Docker? What the Hades was that all about? My never gonna happen father-in-law found a world-class stargazing, fit tea drinking, kombucha sipping hippie off of Facebook and brought him here. And he thinks I'm crazy? What does being a Gemini have to do with anything? I don't need to find myself. I know exactly who I am and I'm not changing anytime soon. Steve is the crazy one. If he thinks that crackpot doctor is gonna help me, okay, boomer. So I can't go back to my apartment and I can't go to Sheila's. I guess I'll just stay right here and see if this upside down world somehow writes itself again. I swear there isn't anything worse than being an unpaid intern. I try my best but the tasks are so tedious and thankless. Just diligently responding to emails as they roll in and note-taking while Manny nods off during meetings. Not to mention going to Starbucks every day to loiter in lines limitlessly for that lousy, lazy loser's lousy lattes. Now he's dragged me into this weird campus. I've got no choice but to do what that ungrateful guy tells me to do. And what do I get out of this? A pat on the back, experience for my resume, and sleep deprivation from working so late. I mean, I guess this wouldn't be so bad if I were actually being paid. That way I wouldn't have to decide whether I should save whatever I have or splurge on sweet green. Hopefully this trip will show him how important of an intern I am to him and he'll finally decide to pay me. It's getting late. I better hurry up to help Manny before he finds himself in trouble. Again. Listen up, overworked grad students. I know you haven't slept in weeks. I know you have multiple papers of your own to write and approximately 40,000 student papers to grade each. I know you're seriously re-examining your lives and your choices, but now's the time to man up. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, and let me be perfectly clear, you will accept it, is to find Manny and bring him to Doc Doc Goose. He may resist. No, he will resist. You must bring him at all costs. What are you waiting for? Go and get. Oh, guys, back off. You're in my personal space. This isn't COVID safe. Oof, my contact lens fell out. 
Dude, not cool. Put me down. My dad's a lawyer. What the Hades? What are those guys attacking Manny for? Don't worry, dude. I'll save you. Why are you helping me? Look, despite what you've put me through these past few weeks, I'm not letting you get mugged. We can unpack all of that later. For now, just get these guys off me. Use me as a shield, bro. I've got hold of this idiot's eye. Go follow Odysseus on him. Turn him into a cyclops. Though I appear to be all alone in a little square box, just go with me on this. I am definitely fighting other people here. You're not all alone. I'm right here beside you. Please, this ain't what I saw applied for. You all get A's. Just don't tell Boomer. That's right, you cowards. Back. Back you go to your grading. That'll teach you for messing with Messi and Manny. You really saved me there, man. That's what unpaid interns are for. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, and since I definitely just went way above and beyond the job description, maybe you or your dad could uh, start paying me? Dude, you're cool, but I don't have an intern. Don't mess with me, man. I'm not messing with you. I don't have an intern. If I did, and he did what you just did, though, I would definitely pay him. You're saying if you, Manny, had an intern, you would pay him. Yeah, sounds about right. Can I get that in writing? Uh, a side character, can you put that in the uh, chat box, please? Uh, say it again, please. If I, Manny, had an intern, I would pay him. Oh, thank God. I can finally start paying off my student loans. I'm not sure why, but hey, oh, congrats, I guess. I'm gonna run and grab our stuff from the Marriott. Wait here, I'll be right back. This day has been more confusing than last year's presidential debates. To recap, both my girlfriend and my side chick kicked me out. Dickie dickied me over. Boomer and that wannabe Fauci both think I've lost my marbles. A bunch of overworked grad students just jumped me in some Zoom fight sequence and a random unpaid intern saved my life. On the bright side, things couldn't possibly get any stranger. So you're saying we were jumped by a rowdy gang of overworked grad students? Yeah, literally just now. And you're saying that after that you saved me and I agreed to pay you? Yeah, I made you write it in the chat box. If I, Manny, had an intern, I would pay him. Well, I didn't write that. It was written by someone named Aside. Are you, are you kidding me? Messy, that never happened. It did, I know it did. Facts matter, even in a post-truth world. Great President Brown, do you see what I see? That all depends. What do you see? You, I see another one of you in these little boxes. Did you join the meeting twice? What are you talking about? I'm right here. And you're right there in a different box. Whoa, is there a mirror mode on this thing? That's me. Same hair, same background, same username and everything. Hey, it's you, the dude who helped me earlier. What's your name? Are you logged in from your own Zoom account? Zoom's telling me your nickname. My name is Manny. What? My name is Manny too. How is this happening? Is Zoom glitching on us? I'm from East Campus. West is best, but I lived in East for a bit. No joke. Dead ass. Let me get this straight. You are my boss and I am your intern and you are not my boss, and I am not your intern. Have you been ripping my dad, Pen? We, we literally just joined this meeting together. Okay, okay, I see it now. Boss Manny, what's poppin'? Fake Manny, go find your own intern. This one, definitely the real Manny. Pretty sure I'm still Manny, just as you still are a hot mess. Man, oh man. 
that dude is either faker than the Kardashians or he's your twin. The two of you are like Snapchat stories and Twitter fleets, epi damn near identical. Interesting tip. If you can prove it, maybe I'll toy with the idea of hiring you full time. With pay and benefits? Uh, we'll see. So, Manny. Yes? Yes. You, Manny One. We'll call you Manny One. First question Is your name Manny? It was a minute ago and still is now, yeah. Manny Two, same question. Duh. Manny One, are you from East Campus? That is what it says on my BUID. Manny Two? Born and raised. Okay, okay, stay with me here. Other Manny, what is your last memory with your dad? Let's see. When I was little, my dad took me to a Gannis for a hockey game and I wandered off and then went home with a kind-hearted RA who adopted me into a nice floor on Rich Hall. How old were you when that happened? Well, my dad had just roasted me for having a recycled bin full of empty white claws in my dorm room during family and friends weekends. And how many sons did your dad have? Two, if I remember correctly, including me. And were you the older son or the younger son? Neither. And how could that be possible? We were twins. Oh, sweet mother of President Brown. One more <laughs> word and I'll put you in a breakout room all by yourself. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just go ahead and mute myself. And you both had the same name? Bro, no. I've always been man. My brother was Guy. Oh, I can't hold myself back any longer. Brother, it's me. I'm your guy. Why are you going by Manny now? Miss me too much? After you, after you went missing, Grandpa changed my name. I always knew you were his favorite, that old <laughs> fart. No fart jokes, Guy. This is Plautus, not Aristophanes. <laughs> I trust you, bro. I just want to make sure I got this right. Go for it. Your name is? Manny. And my name is? What? Manny. And our dad's name was? Danny. And our mom's name is? Franny. And our grandmother's name was? Granny Annie. And our dog's name was? Spot. This is really uncanny. Brother, it's so good to see you again. I agree. I can't believe I found you in this random production meeting after all this time. I'm the Zack to your Cody. And this explains so much. So uh, what's the deal with you and Karen and Sheila Blige? Well, it's kind of a long story, but I was supposed to get breakfast with Sheila Blige this morning by the Jenga building, and I even gave her a sweatshirt that I snatched from Karen. <laughs> you mean this sweatshirt? Where'd you get it? She'll oblige, obliged me. Oh, okay. It's all starting to make sense now. Uh, so, not to interrupt, but uh, could I get that promotion now? <laughs> the man is promotion, bro. He's earned it. Manny, you're hired. I am not a third Manny, but um, <laughs> I'm happy fam. to be hired. <laughs> Ayo, congrats on the promotion, dude. Let's see if he actually means it this time. What do you say we move to Thouse campus together and start our own TikTok account? Happy damn straight. Let's blow this popsicle stand. I'll put my stuff on Facebook Marketplace and we'll skedaddle. B won't be ready for this duo. Enough of this social distancing. We've been apart long enough. Let's meet face to face on the BU beach. I'll be the one with your face. Hey. Can I ask you one last thing? What's that? Since I've been such a huge help in reuniting the two of you, can I get a cut of that auction? Yeah, sure, how about it? Excellent. So you heard it here first, folks. Buy his furniture, his house, even one of his girlfriends if you can put up with either of them. If we're lucky, we might make enough to pay for an actual stage next time. I think some of Manny's property might get us about maybe the cost of one semester's tuition at BU. 
Anyway, you've all been a lovely audience, so be well, be safe, and please scroll over to the reactions button and click the clapping emoji. Or unmute and clap, that works too. Author! Author! Producer! Author! Author! Bravo! Assistant Provost! Hello, everyone! Thank you, thank you to our actors. Thank you to our writers, our, our student adapters. Thank you to our band for um, opening the show for us. Um, thank you all for coming out um, and laughing at some ancient comedy. An ancient comedy that doesn't feel so ancient, does it? <laughs> and this actually works on Zoom. Who knew? <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. And thank you, Sophie. Uh, good evening. Thanks, Sophie. Oh, wow. Yay. Oh, wow. Whoa, whoa. Thanks, thanks. Thank Actually, you. cast, if you stick around, we'll do a quick uh, a quick um, cast photo one now that we've got everyone back on the screen. Yeah, but thank you so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your evening and um, see you around the classics department in the core curriculum. Thank right. you, Sophie. Awesome, well done. Awesome.